Hi, it's Shelly Mosley. Today is Thursday, uh, July the 20th of 2023. And I have a, a word to share with you that I actually heard two mornings ago. I'm so sorry I didn't get to get on uh, yesterday or the day before. I had appointments the day before and yesterday. I just have been, I've had an illness come upon me and I just have not felt well. So um, bear with me and uh, just pray for me if you would. I, I appreciate it. Always appreciate your, your prayers. Um, and I don't know 100% if I'm going to be able to get on tomorrow. Uh, we'll just have to see how things go. But this word um, I heard on Tuesday morning early, and uh, the Lord wanted me to uh, to release that to you. This is one of those, there's a few places in it that's hard to hard to release, but I'm going to be obedient, and uh, that's what he wants done, so that's what I'm going to do. Father, thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are in the midst of us, even when we don't feel well, even when things are things try to come in and distract us and keep us from our purposes, Lord. I thank you that you are there in the midst of us, and I thank you that you just touch us and, and just move in a mighty way in our lives, Lord. You meet us where we are, and we're so thankful for that, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that as this word goes out, Lord, that it, not one word will drop to the ground. I thank you that it will return to you fulfilled. And I thank you, Lord, that the reason that you sent it out, Lord, it will accomplish those things that you sent it out to, to accomplish. And so we look forward to that, Lord. I thank you that you are not a man that can lie. You are the truth. And there is no, there is no name above your name. There is nothing above you. And so, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for your sovereignty, Lord. Thank you. I thank you that you just use me for your glory. I thank you for that you put a hedge of protection around this channel, around this word. Have your way, Holy Spirit. I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, I'll say whatever it is you want me to say. I'll speak whatever it is you want me to speak, Lord, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So um, this word, again, was from July the 18th of 2023. And um, when, you, when we get to certain places in it, we, we just have to remember that God warns for a reason. He warns to prepare us. He warns to allow us once again to come into his presence in, a, in repentance he calls to us to stand in the place that he's called us to stand. And I mean, we, without him, we're nothing. And so it is his agenda that is, it, that is over everything else. No matter how, no matter what we can ask, hope, or think, he always does above and beyond. But it's his work and his way. And so some of these things, like, again, like I said, it's hard to, to say because if we're not careful, fear can come in, but this is not, we don't, God didn't give us that spirit. So we just have to remember that and, and stand on, on his word that he's given us. He said, I am rebuilding what has been built by the hands of man that were satanic agendas. I am tearing down those places that have stood over my people. They have been forced to look at them. I am tearing down those things that have been strongholds over my people. I will rebuild what I deem necessary. The shock and awe are coming. Much shock and awe will be seen on the faces of all. Those places will be in ruin just as the Georgia Guidestones are. They will not be rebuilt by man's agenda. I will sanctify those places and they will be dedicated to me. The blood of many cries out from the ground. Much bloodshed has been sown into the soil of the earth. Many that thought they buried their secrets six feet under will be in great fear 
as their secrets are revealed. Watch as these secrets become public knowledge. Great fear covers those who have done these atrocities. They will not escape as they have believed they have. Many faces you recognize have taken part in evil plans that were forged with hellish desires. The truth of these people and their plots and schemes will be shown in plain view. Nothing is ever hidden as it is believed to be. Never. I see it all. Every deed, every lie, every evil work, every plan, every disgusting thing done in the name of Satan. I see it all. And I am answering with a fire that will not be put out by man's hand. I have told you I have to allow you to have a near-death experience, O United States, in order for you to rise out of the ashes, you must be brought to a place so low that you will cry out for me to deliver you, and I will. I have said I will come from out of nowhere to rescue you, and I will. Do not be dismayed or allow fear to come into your hearts. Do not fall for Satan's tactics. I have not given you the spirit of fear, my children. I have not given that to you. I have given you power, love, and a sound mind. It is by my spirit that those in satanic power will be crushed. The only power he has is by my hand. He can only go so far Sorry, he can only go as far as I allow him. He can go no further. Many believe he can. Many think he has power that matches mine. I assure you he does not. He is not powerful by his own might. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, same I reign as all-powerful and supreme. My strength and might are unmatched. My fire is unquenchable. There is soon coming a day that will look so dark you will believe you have lost this battle that has been raging on. Do not believe the lies of the media. I am telling you in warning you ahead of time so that you are prepared. I warn you so that fear does not grip your heart. There are many lies that have been spoken to you out of the mouths of people that held the keys to these evil plans that were made. And out of those who just spoke the lies, they were told to tell you. I am removing many in the coming days, many who stand against me, who made the decision to bow up against me as if they could. I created them. They have no power in their hands to rise up against me and attempt to stick out their chests and curse me and my name. They will be reckoned with. A reckoning is at hand. With one swipe of my hand, they would be ground into dust and with one move of my finger, they would be utterly destroyed. I gave many chances for them to repent. I gave many chances, but they refused. They refused my offer and instead have decided to go down with the ship they are driving. They've been driving, sorry. Shipwrecked they will be as they scramble to put on life vest and call out in desperation to be rescued. They will indeed go down with their ships, their names blotted out. This brings me no pleasure, none at all. I am a fair and loving God. I am the truth and I cannot lie. What I say, I mean, and what I mean, I say. Believe me at my word, my very word. There is something brewing in your South Atlantic Ocean. Something big that will soon be revealed. Heed the warnings that come and listen to authorities. 
Many of these things are by the hands of man. They have used their intelligence that I gave them for evil deeds, very evil and vile deeds. They have manip manipulated your weather. They have done many things that you would not believe unless I told you. For many years they have done this, and it it is at times that the higher ups, and higher ups is, you know, in quotes, that the higher ups want to divert you and keep the big news hidden from you. Turn your attention elsewhere to cause you to be distracted. My children, do not be distracted. Pay attention. The storms that are coming will be by my hand. The eruptions of volcanoes that have laid dormant for years will be by my hand. These strange sightings in the skies over you are by my own hand. They have created narratives that speak of UFOs. I laugh at this. I sit in the heavens and laugh at what they have schemed up to sell you. Lives, liars and thieves, they all are. Don't you remember what happened at the Tower of Babel? The same is going on now. They believe they have risen to power by their own strength. They have mocked me as they create ways to birth babies in wombs that are not of me. They have created machinery and artificial intelligence to try and take over the world. The days you are in are evil days, but I am uprooting many in this hour. Many will be removed from their places of false power. Know that the hunter story is just unfolding. There is much to this story that is about to be revealed. Uh, there is irrefutable proof that will be leaked out as videos and phone calls come out, leaked by my doing. He will not get away. There is a disgusting laundry list of things he's done, some against children. He has not escaped my justice, he and those with him. The illegitimate one who sits in a stolen seat over your nation will be revealed. He will be demasked. He will be silenced. Watch as even more truths slip from his lips on live TV. Watch as he falls over and over again. There is irony attached to this. His great fall has already begun. Napa Valley will soon be in headlines as storms cover the area. More catastrophes will be shown in this area. Top secret documents will soon surface, leaked out to public view. My children, you were sold out by your own government. You were bought by other countries. There was a price on your heads that has been paid. Prepare your hearts for what's coming. What is coming was meant for your total annihilation. It was intended for your ruin. I am helping you. My people will not be touched. There are places in your ocean that will be exposed. What's been hidden there and what lurks in the darkness of the deep will be uncovered. It's all happening soon. Up until now, it's only been drips of truth. The flood is on the horizon, my children. Floods of truth will not be held back any longer. Truth bombs, as you would say, will be explosions in many places. All across the board, these truths will explode to destroy the narrative at hand. Mayorkas is in hot water. He will soon answer for his part in the evil schemes that have been cooked up. He will not get away unscathed. Wesley, this name you will hear very soon. A tale of two Wesleys, John Wesley and Wesley Snipes. John Wesley's vision has been destroyed. Watch what is spoken about regarding him. 
Wesley Snipes will also be in the news for a significant reason. Watch and listen to what is said regarding him. Angelina Jolie will be a topic of conversation very soon. Not all is ever as it seems. A tarnished reputation will not be all she receives. My children hold the line. Do not be moved by situations that arise. Do not be moved by what you see and hear with your natural eyes and ears. They are always prone to see things in fear. Remove the scales from your eyes so that you can see clearly with clear vision in my spirit so that you can begin to see all the truth of what many in evil power want you to see and believe. Rise up and stand in your place. I have called you to stand. Do not waver. Do not back up. Do not back down. Stand. Very soon, all I have said will become a reality. The natural must manifest when my spirit calls it forth. Ready, set, go. Go forth in my name. Repent of anything and everything you are holding on to. Turn it over to me and be healed. And that was the end of that word. I told you there was some hard places in there to, uh, to say. Um, John, I, had to look up, I had to look up who John Wesley was, and I believe he was uh, the founder of the Methodist Church, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, then somebody correct me, but I'm pretty sure that that's what... Um, what was said and then uh napa valley i had to look up where the uh the south whatever that sea was he said the south uh, sorry i just lost my place um the south Atlantic Sea. I had to had to look up to see where it was, and it's somewhere around Brazil and places like that. But um, some, sometimes he says these things, and I and I have to look after I'm after I'm finished because I don't know for sure. Um, and the thing about the ocean, places in the ocean that'll be uh, exposed. I thought that was you know interesting. There's much truth, and he said it's about to flood out. We've been seeing quite a bit of truth surface, but we're about to see a lot more. But the thing that he really impressed upon me to talk about was when he said, don't be distracted. He, he told us to keep our eyes, you know, to keep our focus and, and not be distracted. And it's very easy sometimes with uh, when distractions come because they can come in different forms to, to do a certain thing that they're meant to, to do. But distraction, it, it comes from all directions in all different kinds of forms, but the result is the same every time. And it, it, it takes us off course and it either prevents us from experiencing something that God has for us, uh, you know, waiting around the corner for us, or it puts us in a wrong position or and going in a wrong direction. And so in getting back on track, you know, where we're supposed to be with our focus on him is um, it's not hard, but we have to do it. We have to be intentional with it, with our time and our attention on things that, that really don't, that don't matter. So um, I, I'll tell you what, I have uh, had an infection and I just have been, I have just, it's just made me feel so bad. And that has been a distraction for me the past um, I mean, I lost quite a bit of sleep last night. I'm just, I'm just, just haven't felt well. And so that has been a distraction. And I'm like, Lord, I need you to focus me and help me. But, but there are things that, that we don't even um, intend to, to come that, that distracts us. But a distraction is something that takes your attention away from what you're supposed to be doing. That's a, that's a, a dictionary.com uh, definition. But the biblical uh, word for distraction, it me it comes from a Latin word, and there's two parts. One is a part, which means apart, 
and the other one means drag. So a distraction is when you're dragged away from your task. You're dragged away from something that you're supposed to be doing, focusing on. And uh, there's not, there's only a few places where in the Bible where it actually uses the word distraction. And one of them is in Luke 10, when uh, we learn about Martha. And remember, Martha was distracted from much serving. It said she had good intentions. The, the thing that she was doing when Jesus was teaching in her home, um, she was she was distracted by, you know, I automatically think of uh, being weary in well doing. You know, we can we can intend to do good and intend to, the things that we're doing me are important, but not as important as it was for her to sit at the feet of Jesus while her sister was, you know, at, at that time. But that word in uh, in Luke ten is is a greek that usually means to drag all around to draw away from or to be driven by uh, about being driven about mentally and so we can sometimes a distraction can feel like that we're being drawn away from our purpose we're being we're not able to focus um and it, and it does have a a consequence on our mind. I mean, that, that is something that, that it, it's hard to focus. It's hard to, um, to, to focus on the thing at hand. And then another place is in first Corinthians seven thirty five, And it says, and this I say for your own profit, that uh, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. That's the New King, New King uh, James Version. And so that word means uh, without distraction or the, the opposite, which is full devotion, you know, complete and full devotion. And Paul is instructing people about marriage and, and saying that, that things of this world can distract us from being fully devoted. And so, and that, that, you know, we, we do that, we do those things when we should be, our focus should be at the, the purpose that God has intended for us, the things that God's called us to do, the things with our, um, you know, that we, on him, I mean, in specific that, you know, and so anything that comes that tries to distract us just leads us away. And here's, I'm just going to give you three people that I, that I um, thought, you know, they, they have dealt with uh, distractions in the Bible. Samson, when you read about Samson in Judges, uh, thir starting in, ver in uh, 13, you, you find a man who, who had a, a destiny and he let his relationship distract him from his purpose. He, he is a, that's a very good story to, to understand distraction. But Samson's identity was established in God. He was a Nazarite. He, he took that Nazarite vow and, um, and that's part of, of who Samson was. But when we, it's very important that we remember that when we, who we really are, our identity will, it, it will always be a point of attack from our enemy. Always. Um, Samson was no different. I mean, he, his, his, the key parts of his vow were constantly challenged by Delilah. She continued to distract him from his identity and convinced him to, to give away his secret. And he did. I mean, it's so sad when you, when you read what happened to him, she distracted him for a purpose and the enemy used her to, to do that. And, you know, there's been times in my life where when you're, when you don't, aren't solid in your identity in Christ, he will use that against you and, and try to get you distracted into thinking you're someone that you're not, or, I mean, by lying to you and, and all of those, you know, all of those things that go with it. Another person is David. When you, um, when you read about David, he was, he was a man after God's own heart. He was, you know, he would, uh, sit in the fields and sing music to, to God. He had a relationship with him and, but even him, you know, he, he was, he became 
distracted. And when you read in Samuel, uh, second Samuel 11 and one, it says in the spring at the time when Kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the King's men and the whole Israelite army. He stayed back and he was supposed to be with them. They destroyed the Amorites, uh, sorry, the, Am the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. And when you read the story, you see what happened. He was, he was supposed to be with his men during uh, the time of war. It was his responsibility. But instead, he stayed behind. And it was there that he became distracted by Bathsheba. And you know, all the things that happened. I mean, he ended up uh, murdering her husband as a, as a cover up for, for a mistake that he made. And look at how, you know, that tangled web that was weaved from all of that. And so he, even though he made a mistake and he repented, you know, God forgives, but look at the mess that was made of her life and his life. And then, of course, we know Eve was distracted by the serpent who who lied to her and convinced her that, you know, God really didn't say what he said and what he said wasn't true. And so she got distracted and made a mistake. But look what happened there. And then, of course, Martha, like I mentioned a minute ago, Jesus had come over for dinner and there was uh, a number of people that were doing different things. But Martha was so distracted by all the business that she wasn't paying attention to Jesus. And sometimes, she, you know, I think sometimes she, she gets a bad rap because we've all, we've all done that, but she let the business distract her from Jesus who was right there in the room. And how many times do we do we do that? You know, it's right. He's right there with us, wanting to spend time with us. And, you know, and we make the decision to do something else. So, you know, she I think she was more worried about what people would think of her. She was the hostess. I mean, it was her home. She had a, a certain responsibility, but she let that distract her from Jesus, who was right there in, in the room. And there's there's a number of different um, ways that distractions can come, but they usually come in three basic forms. John 10 and 10. This is a familiar one. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Period. I mean, that is that is what the intentions are. And so if he can if he can get you distracted from what you're supposed to be doing from your purpose that that you're that you have then he's got you cornered you know i mean we have to be careful with that but here's just a few things that distract us we get distracted by ourselves we get we're human we tend to be um very self-focused you know it's easy for us to get lost in our problems and our to the point where we lose sight of of god and it's easy to do. We've all done it, but we it, we have to be purposed in what we do to not be distracted with, with the things that we need, what we want, what we desire. And so that's like the number one thing. Another thing is lust and love. You know, we, we tend to think that that's for adolescent issues, you know, but I mean, if you if you've been, had a breakup or you've been uh, married that that, ha that a marriage was dissolved or you're having trouble now, I mean, these things are huge distractions from God and his purpose for our lives. And of course, I mean, lust being, being the sin of it, but um, entertainment, here's another one, entertainment, uh, TV, movies, books, there, there are, there's nothing wrong with those things, but it's when we put those things first um, that we, our priorities get out of whack. And, and so we, God gets put on the back burner and that, that we have to be careful with that. Just those types of distractions that come. We can also be distracted by things. We are, we live in a society that promotes having things. Um, you know, every week there's a new gadget that comes out, a new phone, a new TV that can do this and that and all, all of these things. And so when we, put the, put things in this, uh, 
form of distractions, they can really kind of consume us if we're not careful. School, your job, those things can be distractions, even though they're good things, we can, we can, we can let our focus get off of God and on these things specifically. Um, if we're not, if we're not careful that we have to have balance with all of it. And we can even have, uh, be distracted with serving, with serving people, just like Martha was. We have to be, even though we're working for God, we can be doing things for God that can become a distraction if we're not, uh, you know, if we're not careful, it's all about balance and it's all about how we, how we balance the things that God has, has given us. And so we, you know, he just wanted me to, to talk to you about that. We have to be with the things that are going on in our life right now, the things that are, that we're facing, um, we, we're in, we are in evil days. I mean, we know that we, you can look around and, and know that there's, there's no secret, but if we're distracted, you know, it would be like being in a, a car with somebody riding in a car with somebody who's distracted. And I mean, that is not, you know, they, they miss the exit. They are speeding. They're weaving in and out of traffic. They, they're a danger to you in the car and then those around them, you know, in other cars. And so we, that you don't want a distracted driver. And if you're just minding your own business in your own car and then someone else is distracting, distracted, um, you have to be mindful. And if you're not, if you're distracted and you're not paying attention, bad things can happen. And so we just have to be mindful that what God's doing and what God is exposing, um, we can't be in fear and we can't be distracted by the truth of what he is wanting us to, to do. You know, he calls for repentance and these people that are distracted and think, well, I'll repent tomorrow, you know, tomorrow may be too late. And we just, I know that I say that, but we have to be, we have to take him at his word at this moment. We can't just prolong repentance and prolong things to, to get right with him and to turn things over to him. We're not perfect people. And he knows that we're humans and he knows that. And so he, he works with us. He encourages us, but he wants us to be right with him. He doesn't want anything to separate us from him. And of course his love, nothing can separate his love for us, but sin can't separate us. It does separate us. And so we have to be very careful. But the whole point is that the enemy is out for you. Kill, steal, destroy. He wants to not only come in and steal from you, but he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy everything about you. He wants to kill you, kill everything regarding you. I mean, he can kill our faith even. He can kill if we allow him to, but we have to be, if we're not distracted and we, we have our armor on, then we're expecting him because he is, there's nothing new with what he does. He's just, it's just a different day. There's nothing new under the sun that he, that he, you know, tries. He's done it in the past. Doesn't matter what century it's the same. It may just be a different using different people and a different method, but it's the same. And so don't be distracted. It's not, uh, it's not worth it. We have to keep our focus on, on Jesus. You know, I always think of Peter when he walked on the water, he had his eyes focused on Jesus. He was walking toward him. But the minute that he got distracted by the storms around him, what happened? He started to sink He's, and he would have drowned if Jesus hadn't been there. And so, but Jesus, you know, reached his hand out, pulled him up, pulled him into the boat. And then he told him he didn't have faith, he, little faith. And so we just, you know, distractions can come in the form of storms um, that, that, you know, in the natural and in, in the spirit, obviously, but we just have to be mindful that God is on our side and he, his, he is the truth. And if our focus is on him, he will guide us and lead us every time, every, every direction we, he wants us to go as long as our eyes are focused on him. So be blessed. You guys uh, repent of anything that is 
that you're keeping from him. Let him have it all. Don't hold on to it one more minute. It's you'll feel such freedom when you do, when you let go of those things that, that God never intended for you to, to hold on to. So be blessed. If you have any uh, needs for prayer, we have prayer in the morning. Um, please put them in the comments. We pray for you. The Even if we don't know your names, we call out the need and God sees it all. And we are believing with you. We are in agreement with you with the things that you are, are asking God to do in your lives. We, we believe we believe him because he is not a man that can lie. And he has promised over and over and over again in his word that he hears his children when, when they cry out to him he answers when he when we call and so um when we believe and we have faith he there's we, we can move mountains and he will do that for us so any praise reports uh put those in the um comments as well and um, i'm going to try to get on here tomorrow i'm not going to promise you i'm so sorry again that I uh, didn't get to to get on. I did intend to. And yesterday, I just really didn't feel well at all. And so um, just pray for me, if you would. And thank you for praying for our family. We appreciate it so much. Be blessed and have a great night. And I will see you next time.